pray together. Father, we're grateful tonight for these that have gathered for this assembly. Thank you for all of those who serve among us and those that are seeking election for the opportunity to serve. We just pray, Father, you'd bless all of them. In your word, you teach us that we are to honor those who rule among us, and tonight we honor these that have willingly given of themselves to serve in our community. Thank you for each one. Thank you for each person that has gathered here tonight. We just pray for your spirit to prevail among us. Thank you that we live in a nation where we have the freedoms that we enjoy. And I just pray, Father, you'd bless each person that is involved tonight. Thank you for those that are hosting the event and giving an opportunity for all of these uh, just to be here and to share in this event. We pray your blessings upon our time together, and we thank you for it now in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Would everyone please stand for the pledge and then remain standing for the national anthem. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched was so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the balls bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say Born and bred here in Rainsville, uh, went to Plainview High School, graduated Plainview, went to Northeast, uh, moved off to college to Auburn, graduated from Auburn, moved back home. It was always my intention to come back home, work, uh, hopefully start a family. Uh, been able to do that. A uh, couple of years ago, uh, started uh, going to the Alabama Banking School, uh, graduated from there. And, uh, you know, just a Rainsville guy through and through. Uh, proud to call it home. It will always be my home. Uh, no matter where I'm at. And uh, I want to thank the uh, WVSM radio, the Mountain Valley News for hosting this forum. I think this is a great uh, thing for the citizens of Rainsville and um, it's a great thing for our, for our city. I'd like to uh, thank everybody for coming out tonight. I'm Roger Langerfeld. I'm running for mayor. Um, I moved to Rainsville in 1960. Uh, been here ever since. Uh, went to Plainview High School. Uh, got a job right out of high school at Farmers Telecommunications. Uh, worked there for 43 years and I've worked with uh, a lot of different businesses and different companies all over the United States and worked with uh, a you know, great group of people up there. Uh, supervisor over uh, quite a few people for uh, those years that I was there. Just recently retired and uh, in April I retired pleasure that, uh, to serve the uh, city of, of Rainsville for the past 12 years. Now, I have uh, thoroughly enjoyed that, and I have this mic keeps going off. 
but but just uh you know, being in town, being, you know, from Rainsville, and now I didn't start out in Rainsville, I started out in Fife. My family was all from Fife, and I went to school at Fife for a half a year, then moved to Plainview for the, the rest of the time, and I've, I've really enjoyed this. This is a great city, uh, a great place for us to uh, raise our families, our grandkids, our great grandkids, and a lot of you out there know what I'm talking about. And this is just an absolute great place. Say, uh, thank everyone for coming here tonight, uh, WVSM, Miss Guffey, Miss Huber. We do appreciate you uh, help sponsoring this, as well as Mountain Valley News. Um, my name's Joey Graham. I'm running for re-election uh, for City Council Place One. I too am uh, born and bred here in Rainsville, Alabama. I'm a proud uh, graduate of Plainview High School. I tell everybody, I would, I would say I went K through 12 there, but when I went to Plainview, they didn't have a K, so I went to kindergarten at the uh, Baptist Mission Center. Um, here recently, I'm a, a graduate of the Leadership to Cap class. I'm a proud father of two. Uh, I have three older siblings, three sisters, all of which graduated from Plainview. One of them still currently teaches first grade at Plainview. Some of y'all may have had Miss Jenkins. She's a lot nicer than I am. Um, you know, I have a vision of what I'd like to see in the next four years. Okay. I'm Tina Pike. I've lived in Rainsville for five and a half years. I was born and raised in Powell and Fife. My dad's family was from Fife. My mom's family was from Powell. I went to school at Fife several times. I went to nine different schools, so I got to meet a lot of people and do a lot of traveling. And I'm here tonight to stand up for you, to be a voice for you, to hear you, and to listen to you. I'm here because I care about Rainsville, and the best thing my husband's ever done for me is move me to Rainsville five and a half years ago. Uh, hey, uh, thanks for coming out, and thanks to the VSN and Mountain Valley for putting this on. My name is Marshall Stiefel. I'm running for city council place one. Uh, my dad and mom are Charlie and Greta Stiefel. I'm a lifelong resident. Uh, I went to Plainview, graduated in 94. I uh, got a degree in political science from Athens State University. My wife is Nicole Stiefel. She teaches uh, special needs at five, and I have one little girl, Landry. She's five. Uh, my name is D.L. Stiefel, for those of you who don't know me. I actually, uh, my family. I, uh, hey, that does sound better. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, we enjoy it here, and I want to be able to serve, continue to serve the people of Rainsville. I love this town. Good afternoon. My name is Bijan Tahiri. I'm originally from Iran, and in 1974, I was in scholarship for come to U.S. And they asked me which state do you want to go to. I didn't know it was different state <clears throat> here. And uh, so I went to the library, and I looked at all the colleges, universities, through the list of what they had. <clears throat> yeah, Alabama. Cut off again. Alabama was first. So unfortunately, y'all got me here. And uh, somebody say, what happened if Alaska was first? I said, well, probably in Alaska. So who knows? But anyway, that's a long story on my life. Been here for 41 years. I went to University of Alabama and uh, got my degree on civil engineering. Been working for state 
DOT for which is called Highway Department for, four, for 37 years. I'm Ricky Baum. I've served on the city council here in Rainsville for 16 years. I've lived here all my life. We've worked and done many things. One of the buildings we're in tonight was one of the first buildings that we was able to receive funding for. We was able to build a sports complex, recruit new industry over to Rainsville Industrial Park. That's what I'm all about. I want to move Rainsville forward, make it a great place to raise a family and raise our children and our grandchildren. I appreciate you. Thank you for being here. I'm Gary Hartline, and uh, a lot of you know me from Number One Party. Me and my wife owned that for, since 2004. Been happily married for 28 years. We got two awesome kids. Uh, our daughter is a 2014 Auburn graduate, and our son is an Eagle Scout, so we have a lot to be proud of. We could have lived anywhere. Uh, I was born in Fort Payne, went to school at Plainview, but if you live in Rainville, you chose to live in Rainville, and we did too. It's a great place to live. We want our people, our citizens, to be part of our government, and that's why I'm running. I want to go sit on that council seat and represent your ideas and your goals for Rainville. I don't want to go and represent my ideas and my goals. That would be a dictatorship. I want to go and be a representative. That's what councilmen mean. We're supposed to represent. And anything less than that would be an injustice. Thanks for your time, and I appreciate your vote. Good evening, everybody. Uh, for y'all that don't know me, uh, I'm Derek Carlson. Uh, I've lived here my whole life. I uh, went to school at Plainview. Uh, uh, after I uh, graduated at Plainview, I joined the United States Marine Corps. Uh, went to uh, Iraq twice, did two combat tours. Uh, I came back, and uh, I'm here, and I, I've, I've got my own business now. Uh, it's at Safe Solutions Pest Control here in Rainsville. Um, I love the city and I love to serve. Uh, I'm married to uh, Ashley Kill Rawson. I have uh, three wonderful sons, and uh, I'm just motivated, uh, motivated to run, and motivated to be your city councilman. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. I'm Jeff Young. Um, I was raised in Fort Payne, but I wised up and I moved to Rainsville 21 years ago. Uh, I have a, two daughters, uh, Hayden that's 19 and Bailey that's 14. Uh, I'm running for place five, city council, and uh, I do have a business here in Rainsville on ProScape Landscaping, which I've had for going on 18 years will be so. But um, like I said, I appreciate everybody coming out tonight and listening to what we have to say. And uh, this will be for both mayor candidates. And the first question is, why are you running for mayor? Nick, you'll go first. I'm running, running for mayor because um, I'm not interested in going backwards. I'm interested in going forwards. And I think in Rainsville, we need someone in the mayor's office that's always looking ahead, looking to the future. We've done a lot in this term. We've done a lot of work. Uh, we've expanded our public safety. We're working on expanding our infrastructure. We've laid a foundation that will put Rainsville into the future and, and makes days ahead much better than the ones we've had in the past. And I'm interested in serving four more years because I think I've got the work ethic, I think I've got the energy to push, to wake up every day and push this city to be the best it can be. Well, uh, 12 years ago, I ran for city council. And back then, I, I told the story about how I came to Rainsville and people helped me and, and as a little boy. And, and it still stands true. And that, that's the same reason that I ran now, I'm running this time, is to, to help out in the community just like people helped me a long time ago. And, you know, we have done a great deal of work this, this term. The, uh, we've uh, added ball fields, we've added uh, buildings, we've uh, remodeled the uh, municipal building. Uh, we've done a great deal of work in this, in this term. And, and that's the kind of things that I want to see go forward is, is building, building this community, building it for our kids and our grandkids going forward 
and, and keeping everything within budget. Uh, you've got to do that. Just moving forward and keeping everything going in the right direction and doing it all with harmony in the, in the mayor and the city council. And we've got to do that because people, people won't come to town if you're not, you know, if you don't have harmony. We've got to have that harmony back. So that's one of the things. Thank you. Explain what the powers of separation means to you. Separation of powers is all about the constitutional duties of each elected official. The mayor has a separate set of constitutional powers than that of the council members. The mayor has um, been given the authority to have day-to-day uh, -day supervision over uh, the city employees. The mayor is effectively the CEO of the city. Now, the council has a separate set of powers that's invested in it. And the powers that are invested in the city council are, the, the council has everything to do with the finances. Um, we are in charge of every penny of tax dollar that gets spent. And, and also note this, that in a community that's our size, that the council is effectively a six-person council. Uh, you have the five elected council members and the mayor um, as the uh, council as a whole. Also, the council is given the authority over policy. Um, the council, it sets the policy on how the mayor is to run the city on a day-to-day -day basis. But the easiest, um, easiest position to overstep your constitutional powers is um, that of a council member, because outside of a meeting, we have no authority. From what I've researched about this question, and it is the separation of power, it is beneficial and seems necessary to me to maintain efficient, honest, and unbiased governmental system. And I stand by that. I know that's not much of an answer, but that's just the simplest answer there is for that question. From what I have read and what I understand, in a municipality our size under 12,000, Essentially, the mayor is the CEO, but he's also a voting member of the council. He can, uh, you know, create or suggest ordinances or uh, laws. He can vote. He, and he also runs the day to day. Um, that's my interpretation of how the league municipalities, that's what they've got written on their website. Uh, you know, he's essentially he's a city council member, but he also signs the check and oversees the day-to-day. The -day. Uh, what issues compelled you to run for the council and where do you stand on those? The issue that interests me most of all uh, that I've talked about almost every time we, we've had this type of environment is to bring jobs to this city. Uh, we do a great job of uh, educating our children through the schools in this area. We do a great job of providing recreational activities for them. Uh, but we don't prepare them or we don't have anything to offer them, uh, enough to offer them when they go out into the workforce. Uh, so we actually, in order to generate revenue for this city to do the other functions that we're uh, responsible for, we need more jobs. I'm the chairman of the Industrial Development Board, and I have always advocated that we need to be more proactive. We need a budget to work from. We need a website that's dedicated to recruiting jobs. We need to be able to go to uh, expos and meet face-to-face -face with people who are, uh, have jobs to provide. I've been on the other side of the fence. I've been there where we're seeking locations. I know what they're looking for. They're looking for good infrastructure, which is also important. They're looking for security from the police force. and and safety there, also with the uh, fire department. So those are the things that I think are very important. One of the questions I think was to rank, rank the, uh, what I thought was important. So maybe I've done that with this, this answer as well. But my priority 
Uh, I'm interested in a lot of things, but my top priority is to generate more jobs for our citizens so we can have better revenue stream coming into the state and so they can make good livings for their family. As much as I love Rainsville, we need more jobs. About eight years ago, I stood right here and I promised that I would the best I can do for this city if you get me elected. And you did, and I did a fairly job that doing the job you gave me to show what I can do. Uh, as a civil engineer, that's obvious. You don't have to go hire a civil engineer to do daily to daily, weekly work for this city. I'm here free, and I can do the same thing I did eight years ago. Uh, I didn't know physically I could be able to run again. The, I guess some of you didn't know I had cancer, but the good Lord had spared me to come back one more time and serve this town, the, the town that I love, that my kids grow in here, my life is here, and what I was going to tell you on the first question was, they say if you get in Sand Mountain, it's hard to shake the sand off your shoes. And I found that out 41 years ago. And I'm still here, and physically I'm doing good. I'm energized, and hopefully you put me back in that office again to we can grow this city and have a peace and harmony among us like we did years ago. And I appreciate your support, and I beg you to put me back in the office again where we can do uh, more progress for this city. Thank you, man. How will you best represent the city of Rainsville? I will represent the city of Rainsville with uh, strong leadership and be fair to all the people in the city. Uh, going, going forward, uh, just like in the past, I have uh, represented the city at, at different, different levels, uh, working with the economic development in, uh, of uh, Mr. Jimmy Durham, working with them on different projects down through the years, uh, working with uh, the uh, highway department, state highway department getting funding, you know, that we need for our road, road projects and stuff like that. When you go see the, the senators and the representatives and go to Montgomery and try to uh, get funding for highway, highway projects, that's the things that you have to do as a, to represent the city in, in a positive manner. Uh, we've got bridge projects going on. It was just a few weeks ago, um, we went down to, uh, to Gunnersville and met with a, the with a bridge project, the people from ATRIP. And moving, moving the city forward uh, in a positive manner uh, with great leadership, and I think that's what I can do uh, to move this city forward. Thank you. Okay, I get asked a lot, uh, you know, the mayor's job in Rainsville, what is the mayor's job? And I tell them, I give them a, a bunch of different answers, but the, chief, the two chief uh, jobs I think that the mayor's office has is, is that, that the mayor's the chief advocate of the city. The mayor's the face of the city. And so when you go outside of Rainsville, and you tell folks you're the mayor of Rainsville, you are, in lots of ways, what they think of the city. And I think also, I, can, I play a mediator role. Uh, oftentimes, we've, uh, city services, employees, sometimes get crossways with some of our citizens, the people that we serve. And in lots of ways, my job is to smooth over, smooth, smooth over those differences. And I, I try to do that. But the biggest thing, I think, is the mayor, the mayor needs to be the chief cheerleader for the city and always be positive, always be upbeat. I th feel like I've done that for four years, and in another four years, I'd be Rainsville's biggest cheerleader. If elected, are you secure enough in your convictions to vote your own conscience without being bullied or swayed by the mayor or other council members into voting their way? Yes, I am. I've made that decision for 16 years on the city council. It's pretty simple. I can't be bought. And I can't be bullied because I'm going to stand up to do what's right for the people in Rainsville to make our town a better place to raise a family, to raise our children, and raise our grandchildren. No, I will stand up for the citizens of Rainsville. I'm running to be your voice. What I think about things don't matter. It's what you think about them. When you send me to that seat, when we get these real important issues that we're going to vote on, we're going to publicize it, and y'all are going to be informed of what's going on. 
and it's how y'all feel about it, it's how we vote on it. It don't matter who wants things done what way if it's against what y'all do. We may be the only one to vote no, or we may be the only one to vote yes, but we'll do it together. There are various rules and ordinances on the books that are not being enforced. If the current laws are no longer relevant, they should be deleted or revised and then enforced. Uh, what is your opinion? Does that make any sense or do I need to yeah, reread it? it makes sense. Okay. Um, I, think, uh, I think we'll probably need to get with the city attorney and kind of go over these laws and uh, see if some needs to be revised or uh, maybe taken off the books. Uh, that's kind of my opinion. Just kind of take another look at it and see what we can do to move forward. Uh, yeah, I was uh, spoke with some of the people that's in office now, and there are a few ordinances and stuff that's not being enforced. And um, I want to look in more into it and see these. But um, if they're not being enforced and they are not uh, not deemed sufficient for our city, they need to be done with, get got away with. Uh, it's uh, wasting our people's time. So uh, that's it. Can you explain the reasoning behind contracting the mowing and upkeep of city properties and right-of-ways with out-of-town businesses rather than using existing employees or hiring local teenagers on a summer contract as is done at the city pool and the Field of Dreams? Sure. Uh, of course, this, uh, this summer was the first time that, to my knowledge, Rainsville's ever contracted or mowing out. And that's something that's always been done in-house. All we've always done with city employees. Uh, that's something that I asked the council uh, to allow us to look at. And uh, I think it's paying big dividends. We've cut the cost in half. There's a big difference in, in hiring kids to call a ball game, uh, uh, lifeguard at the pool versus having them operate equipment under uh, reasonable time constraints. There can be, there can be some danger in that. Uh, but I think, um, Contracting out the mowing, I think going forward, I think it's a no-brainer. Uh, it supports local industry, it supports uh, small business. Uh, as far as the out-of-town business, uh, that is a bid uh, process and I think it should be opened up every year. It's not something that should be promised for three years or five years. It should be bid on every year. And uh, the lowest bid that can get the job done reasonably in the time frame we want it done is the folks that should get the job. Uh, the bid process uh, for changing the mowing, it, it happened, uh, it kind of failed the way it did with uh, two employees uh, deciding to leave the city. And so it did come up to uh, possibly contract that out. And it went across the council, uh, mayor and council uh, agreed to try it for a year and see how it came out. Uh, the, the amount of money that, that we were looking at savings, it, it, it was a pretty good bit amount, you know, pretty good uh, amount. But uh, we've had to make some uh, call a few people back in uh, hourly to do some things that we needed to get done. And so it's probably not saved hardly as much as we thought it was going to. Uh, the part about uh, possibly hiring uh, local teens, that would, be, that would be a possibility just like we do on the, on the uh, pool and the sports complex. But we would have to make sure that we got uh, somebody that would be managing them to uh, make sure that everything was safe, everything was done the proper way, because there are, there are a lot of liability to that. And so that would be something that we could look into, and, and it's a possibility, but you know, we'd have to make sure on the liability side of it. So The city of Rainsville are growing increasingly concerned about the unrest between the mayor and city council. If elected, do you anticipate being able to work cooperatively with the mayor and other council members for the betterment of the city of Rainsville? Explain why you feel this way. Um, yes, I'm very excited about the opportunity to work with whomever the citizens vote for, whoever you choose to serve you. There is not anyone that I cannot work with. Um, just the opportunity to work with anybody is welcome to me. Uh, I'll listen. To you, I'll research your questions, and I will serve you the best that I can. 
and I can agree to disagree with anyone, and I'll listen to all opinions. I won't be swayed, but I'll go with what my heart tells me and what I'm guided to go with. Marshall. <clears throat> yes, I feel like I could work with anybody. Um, you know, I feel like a lot of the problem has been in the previous four years is, you know, some people have had personal agendas that got in the way of the city's <coughs> needs and you know they were just real bullish about it and maybe they wanted their name in the paper or whatever but you know you gotta set that aside and you know do what you think is best for the city and if you know roger or nick had a good idea or Bijan or dl or ever who it was you know even you know whether i supported them or not i could still you know if i got a good idea they got a good idea and if i agree with them you know, I'm on support their idea. <coughs> Harmony, along with road resurfing, resurfacing, has been the two greatest failures of this past administration. Um, the easiest manner to rectify the uh, Harmony issue is, is very simple. Communications, communication, communication. We have to be able to talk with each other at any given time. Uh, there needs to be an open line of communication between all six elected officials. And there are going to be points and times where one party thinks this is the best way to move forward and this other party thinks this is a, 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 a better way of doing it. If there is an open line of communication, then, then you can hash this out uh, privately amongst yourself. And the Alabama Open Meetings uh, Act allows for individual contact amongst uh, council members and amongst mayor and council member. Uh, so we've got to communicate and I, I pledge to you this, if, if I am given the privilege and the honor to serve another four years, uh, I will always have an open line of communication and any of the other elected officials that this city deems uh, worthy to serve uh, will be able to call me at any time and I will always answer that call if unable to answer it at that point in time, I will call them back in a timely manner. I think that's just uh, the way it should be. And also, if you're on the losing end of a vote, that's not the worst thing in the world. One thing you'll never see me do, you'll never see me go on Facebook complaining about a vote not going my way. Uh, that's not agreeing to disagree. Do you believe that increasing economic development in Rainsville should be a priority for the city council? If yes, what can the city do to accomplish this priority? If no, why not? Of course, yes. Uh, if you look at other towns and research and find out what they're doing to increase their town, bring an industry in, uh, you know, with today's computers and internet, we can find a lot of issues that other towns have and, and learn from it and bring it in. So uh, one of the things that I like to do to this town to grow is, of course, is always road, road, road. If industry wants to come in this town and they ride around and they don't see uh, good roads and good bridges and pretty, clean, curb and gutter, they're not going to come here. That's the number one. Also, if they go on the side of the streets, because they want to live on some of these streets. And we have some streets that's not been paved in 25 years. So if you elect me, I promise you that whatever we can, it depends on how much money the mayor's going to let me have, plus what I'm saving because of the engineering cost. I promise you I would do my best to pave your street. Uh, in the past, what I did, I went down there, looked at every street and give a grade, zero through 10, zero being the worst, 10 being the good shape, and we went from there, and we paved four miles and a plus paving projects. So 
to do that, if, if you like me, I do the same thing I did eight years ago. And I promise you I will do you a good job. Thank you. Seems like this is part of the same question we got earlier, but that's good. We can talk a little bit more about jobs, uh, and we can talk about what we need to do to, to lure uh, those jobs in and improve economic, uh, the economic development of the city. Uh, we have in Rainsville probably the best industrial park as far as it being prepared and ready for our industry that you'll find in, in northeast Alabama. Uh, so it's there. It's kind of like having the, the horse, uh, and we just need to get that saddle on there so we can ride out. Uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not an engineer. I'm not a civil engineer. But you, the law in Alabama requires that in order for you to do civil engineering work and be able to submit bids and draw specifications and such, you have to have a license. If you do not have a license and you do that, you incur, the city incurs, we the citizens, you the citizens, incur a tremendous liability. I don't think we want to go down that path. Anytime when uh, my opponent talks about doing that work, we still had to have a licensed civil engineer come behind to make sure that every, all the T's were crossed, the I's were dotted, and so forth. So I appreciate his talents, and I appreciate his willingness to support this, but we need to be careful. Thank you very much. When a motion second and vote to approve is made over an issue during a regular council meeting it becomes law if elected are you willing to accept the fact that even though you might not have been in favor of the issue passing it is your duty to the citizens of Rainsville to move forward and see that the issue is carried out as voted upon by the governing body of the city and explain your answer please as the, as the mayor of the city of Rainsville, uh, I would I would have to carry out that whatever was voted on because the when when you when you have six people elected, uh, just because I don't agree with that whatever that motion is and whatever that second is and we vote on it, just because I don't agree on it, don't mean that it's not brought into law then. Once, once, that, once that's been voted on, then it is law. And, and I would have to go along with the council, even though I'm, I'm the mayor, and I might not agree with them. Because sometimes, just because they have an idea, then I might not agree with that idea. So yes, I would have to go along with it on that. Because they are elected by the people, the citizens of this town, just like I am. Thank you. Nick? As a citizen and as an elected official, I'll always respect democracy. I'll always respect rules of procedure, and I'll always respect the rule of majority. And that's what we've done in this term. The council has voted on things that I've not been in favor of, and guess what? They've happened, because that's what happens in a democracy. The majority rules. Two instances. We had a million, over a million dollar bond issue that was interest only until 2023. I was adamantly against that. I wrote the public, uh, I got on social media, and I let you know that I was against that. But guess what? We've got that loan on the books. And guess what? We're going to pay interest only until 2023. It's no secret to anybody in this room or anybody in this city. My pick for the new city clerk when our longtime city clerk retired, Judy Lewis, was Debbie Lanier. I made that known. If you live in the city of Rainsville, and you didn't know that was my, my goal, my intention, then you may have been living in a cave. But I wanted her to be the next city clerk. Guess what? That's not what happened, because the majority rules. I'll always respect the majority rule. I'll always respect the process. But that doesn't mean, as a citizen and as an elected official, that I don't have a right to express my displeasure or at a time when I disagree. We know the council has been responsible with the city's money, but how do you feel about spending money to keep the roads paved and the police and fire departments sufficiently manned and equipped for the betterment of the city? Well, the first job of any elected official is to protect the citizens. So police and fire is number one. Uh, roads is, you know, we got to have great roads. We got to have a great infrastructure if we're going to lure all these businesses like DL talked about. That is crucial, and to have money budgeted for all that is, nece is a necessity in everything that we do when we're writing a budget. Those are top priorities. Police and fire, 
that's just like having groceries. You got to have that. You got to have sewer and roads. You got to have that. You go on down, parks and ag center and, and all these other things, walking trails, those are great. And they come when you have extra money and when you bring in all this revenue, when you bring in new businesses and people move to our great city, you're going to get all that stuff. That just trickles on down and we have those great things and we have a great city now. And I'm for all that. But like, like I said, police and fire are number one. We got to do that before we even talk about anything else. I mean, if, that, if we don't have the protection of the people, we don't need none of the rest of it. So if the people ain't secure in everything that we do, nothing else matters. Ricky. The uh, police and fire department will always be top priority because the simple reason is they are emergency personnel. We have a young guy sitting in audits with us tonight that uh, got burnt real bad years ago. He played ball for me. And you have to appreciate doing stuff like that. I've done that for, I was a volunteer for about 20 years. That's what inspired me to run for the city council the first time. And I can tell you, if you ain't never been to something like that, you really don't know how to deal with it. But let me just tell you, police and fire is always gonna be the primary focus because they're emergency personnel. Far as the rest of the departments in the city, you're sure you cannot grow your industry. You cannot bring jobs and create jobs to our city. You cannot bring our ball fields are as equals imported because the simple reason is that keeps our kids on the ball fields, keeps them off of drugs, keeps us something to do, keeps grandparents something to do. So the sewer, you can't grow without it. You've got to have sewer, you've got to have the fire department, the police, but we always got to have a special interest on the police and fire protection. They got to be the focus. If elected, what would you do to improve the paving and road maintenance programs of the city streets? Um, I've been asked this, you know, are y'all going to do paving? Are you gonna, you going to take care of my road? I'm not going to promise that we're going to take care of your road. Um, not being in the council right now, I would have to look and see what monies we have to set aside and what we'll be able and then get with the engineers and then address what roads are going to be available. If your road's that, you know, that's good. Your road's going to get paid. But if it's not, you know, that's why I'm not going to promise. I've had, I've had past uh, politicians in this city say, hey, your road's going to be paved this year. And that was 10 years ago. And the road still wasn't paved. So if, if it's in the budget, yes, we'll get to your roads. But if it's not, you know, you might have to wait a little while. But you're not, you're not going to get any promises from me that your road will be paved this election. And that has been done in the past, but I won't do that. Derek. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> what I would do is, uh, you know, I'd make sure we got a budget. Uh, I'd like to see us have a good budget for it and maybe surface three to five miles uh, of paving maybe a year. Uh, but we got to make sure we got reoccurring revenue coming in so we can do that. Uh, but I'm a road guy. I'm on them all day. Uh, like I said, they're uh, very important to everything, everything in the city. Um, so I would like to try to do three to five miles a year if, if it's in the budget. Uh, so. Okay, in your opinion, how does the Agribusiness Center affect the economy of the city of Rainsville? There's no doubt uh, Agri Center has got an effect on the economy in Rainsville. Uh, it's opened in uh, September of 10. Uh, of course, tax revenue to the city of Rainsville has grown over that time. We've experienced inflation. We've experienced the increase of cost of goods. But the tax revenue is up. Uh, I'm unsure what the effect is. I mentioned in the last forum, and I've talked with the Agri Center Board about this. I think it's a good time to bring in a, uh, an economist or, or maybe a graduate student that's looking for a project to study our scenario with our city, with our Agri Center, and give us a true pic picture of what the economic impact is. Um, I don't think you can argue that there is an effect. I just, uh, and I think a lot of people, I get this uh, question a lot, I want to know what, uh, what the real effect is. I'm a hard numbers person, and, and I'd like to know uh, where we stand on that. Uh, the Agri Center has, uh, I think the Agri 
Actors Center has, has helped the economy of uh, the city of Rhinesville. I, I don't know that the, uh, all the reports that we get is, is exactly what they are because we have so many other things in town that helps bring people into town uh, that helps on the economy too. But uh, from the reports that, that, uh, that the Agri Center Board has, has put out, um, it, it is a good report, uh, somewhere around five or six hundred thousand dollars, you know, a year. But, but that may not be exactly, but it, it is a good report. One of the things about the Agri Center that people may not realize is, you know, somewhere around 42 weeks out of 52 weeks a year, there's an event going on up there. And, and those events may be not just one day, they may be multiple days. And so that's gonna, that's gonna put a, a, a bunch of people in town for uh, going to the restaurants and going to uh, buy fuel or maybe buy groceries. Some of them spends the night, so they're buying things in town, which in turn uh, creates a positive tax base. And, and the national average on tax, tax base is that, uh, that, that it's gonna turn over uh, eight times itself you know, once you get a dollar's worth of tax in town, it's going to turn over about eight times before it actually quits creating uh, dollars in, in the tax revenue. So I think in the, in, in the overall, it is a good thing for the city of Rainsville. Uh, like he said, uh, the mayor said, you know, we may need to get a study done that's a little bit better so we know exactly. But overall, I think it is a positive for our town. If elected, are you willing to seek and accept legal advice concerning how the duties of your position are to be carried out? Uh, I really don't know what they're getting at here. I mean, I assume it's, I'm going to take it for face value. Yes, I would seek and accept legal advice. You know, if I thought it was needed, you know, I wouldn't want to call a lawyer every five minutes because that could run up a pretty big bill. But I'll just say yes. Uh, over the past four years, I, I have um, often sought legal opinions when uh, there were issues that I wasn't very clear upon. Now, we are a member of the Alabama League of Municipalities, and the Alabama League of Municipalities has a separate legal division. And when you are a member of that, you can call them or send a correspondence via an email and have that question answered at no cost. Yes, I would welcome the advice of an attorney. I would have to have it because I'm new. I, I'm not a politician. I'm, I'm a newcomer and I'm just coming up and I'm just learning. I'm eager to learn how that I can serve you. And the only way I can learn that in a legal sense is to be advised by an attorney. So I'm eager to learn how to help you. How do you feel the city's government is doing in terms of being transparent and are there changes that you would like to see made regarding that? I think uh, the organization of uh, city government is like most any organization you deal with where you're dealing with people. Uh, communication is good, better communication is even better. If that uh, kind of simple that way. There's always room for improvement. Uh, things that we need to do, I think, is uh, we need to get more involvement, more feedback from you as citizens and as voters of this city. One way we can do that is to put more things online, more things that are available to you. Another way we can do it, uh, I know that uh, Mayor Jones for the last four years has been having a state of the city address once a year. Uh, some of those are attended pretty good, some are not. But I would think that we need to, maybe on a quarterly basis, have something that we just call a status report that is a requirement of not only the mayor but of the city council and department heads to come and give a report of what's going on in their particular areas of responsibility. I'm going to read what I wrote in here, then I'll explain what I'm talking about. I feel like that the open and an honest government makes it all better in what we know the truth. On my job, I have to be honest with my co-workers, the employees that work for me, and you as a taxpayer to make sure that your dollar is spent wisely. And communication is number one. And communication is number two, communication is number three. So if you don't have communication, you're not going to function right. You're not going to do your daily work or weekly work or whatever you're dealing with. 
So number one priority on my list is communication. And have it. When there are city-sponsored events, are you in favor of using Rainsville-based businesses over outside businesses when products and services are available within the city of Rainsville? And expa explain, please. I am very in favor of using uh, local businesses. Uh, I have uh, always supported Rainsville very much. I, my my wife, she'll she'll vouch for this because uh, uh, you know I, I can be somewhere else and I'll I want to drive back to Rainsville to buy this or you know whatever go to the grocery store or what, and that's just the way I am. I want to support our town with everything that I I can, whether it be buying groceries in town. Uh, buying my diesel fuel in town for my truck or uh, whatever it is. I, that's just the way I am. And, and using the local businesses, I think it's the right thing to do because they're here, they, they're, they're part of their, our chamber, they're, 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 they're part of our town, our city. And I think we need to use them a, as much as possible. Now I know every once in a while there's something that happens and we need something or whatever and we have to go out of town for it. That's, part of, that's just part of it because Rainsville don't have everything you need. But if you've got something here in town or in the city of Rainsville that we can use and, and it's what we need to put on an event or, or whatever, then we need to be using it. That's my stand on that. Nick? I'm absolutely in favor of supporting everything Rainsville. Uh, and I think that's uh, something that all of us here that are already elected officials can vouch for. As far as the city's business, we've always pushed to support Rainsville businesses and Rainsville people first. I tell people all the time, the best way you can help your town is support the people here and the businesses that are in business. Me and my family, we go to church here in Rainsville, we shop, we buy our groceries here in Rainsville. If we need a car battery uh, for a car, we shop here local. Uh, I see Miss Sample sitting back there with s and Wholesale. Me and my wife about 18 months ago built a house. We bought a ton of things from Miss Samples. We bought uh, from Johnson, uh, Johnson Lumber. We practice what we preach. We believe that you should shop Rainsville first. So I'm absolutely in favor of supporting Rainsville when at all possible. If elected, what would be your priority list from most important to least important from the following? Police department, fire department, sanitation department, road department, ag center, bevel center, library, and parks and recreation. Explain why you set these priorities in each order. I know it's a long list. Well, as I said before, the uh, fire department, the police department, they are emergency personnel. They are life over property. It's real simple. We've got to have them because the simple reason is they're saving people's lives. They're protecting our property. They're protecting us as far as the police is. Well, I feel like we've answered the same question all night. Uh, it's a common sense question. Uh, Ricky nailed it. There's no doubt. You would go police and fire your protection. Uh, that's our first job. I mean, the sewer, you got to have infrastructure. You got to have that. That's second. But we got to protect life first. Infrastructure second. The parks and the ball fields, they're awesome as well, and they're needed. Uh, how do you feel about the Chamber of Commerce receiving $36,000 a year and would you make any changes and explain those changes? I'm okay um, with the Chamber receiving $36,000 a year um, as long as, you know, they're using it here to promote our local businesses. Our local businesses will continue to bring reoccurring revenue here to Rainsville. Uh, so I'm okay with that. If, if we ever veer away from that, then then maybe we might need to renegotiate, but I'm, I'm okay with them receiving $36,000 a year. Jeff. I want Derek, I, I totally agree that they should have 36,000. In some cases, if we had it in our budget, I'd like to give them more because some of y'all know me, I play music out and everything. I know the Freedom Festival is supplied through that money and that's great. I, I'd like to have something like Fort Payne does, you know, on a monthly basis here in Rainsville because the Freedom Fest does nothing but bring music in, I mean, bring music in, bring money in to the city, you know, so that boosts the economics. And I, like I said, I have no problem whatsoever with, with them getting 36000 So, and 
I'd like to see, like I said, I'd like to see more festivals and stuff and, and uh, more things going on for the people. And that's coming from that money. So thank you. Thanks again uh, for everybody coming, and, and thanks again to Mountain Valley and WVSM. I've enjoyed being here and enjoyed uh, telling you uh, about my vision for Rainsville. Uh, I see growth. I see, a lot, I see good days ahead. Uh, but my fear is the growth, if we don't address this growth and we don't structure it in the way that we want it to be, Rainsville's going to end up to be a, a bedroom community. And I don't think anybody in here wants that, wants that. A bedroom community is somewhere where people sleep and they go and do other activities elsewhere. I started the conversation about ACE communities. Rainsville is now a certified Alabama community of excellence, and that's something I'm very proud of. And, and through that, we've leveraged off of that and got funding for comprehensive planning. Through comprehensive planning, we can make our city to be the city that we want it to be in 5, 10, and 20 years. I want to continue that. I've, I've enjoyed serving you. It's an unbelievable honor and privilege to be the mayor of your hometown, the town that you grow up in. And I want to continue to do that. And so I ask for your support, your prayers, and your vote on August 23rd. Roger. I'd like to thank everyone for being out here tonight. Uh, it's, been a, it's been an absolute pleasure for me for the past uh, 11 and a half years to serve this, this uh, city, uh, the citizens of this town, and in the, in the, in the community around us. Uh, you know, as you grow up in, in a small town like this, and, and uh, the, the people that, that helped you do things in town, and you know, it, it, it's, uh, it's an absolute pleasure to have the opportunity to put back into your, into your town like what those people gave you a long time ago. And, 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 and I look back at some of the people that helped me down through the years, and it's, it's absolute pleasure that I, can, that I get a chance to do this. And, and to be the mayor of, uh, of this town moving forward, uh, I, think it's, I think it's a great pleasure. And I would uh, really appreciate the opportunity. I think I can lead this town with, uh, with structure, uh, leadership, and, and move it forward in the future. Joy. Thank you. One minute, Joy. <laughs> yes, ma'am, Ms. Kay. <laughs> Uh, I, I would like to tell you what my vision for Rainsville is uh, moving forward. And, and I, I think that we have a wonderful opportunity of growing an existing revenue stream. Um, in 2015, our sanitation department had total gross receipts of $620,000. The cost associated with that department was only $450,000. We had a net profit of $170,000 in 2015. Uh, this year, our nine-month uh, report from Miss Betty Holcomb is showing that we're on track to have a $190,000 profit. And that's from picking up the sanitation in both rounds. Rainsville and Fife. Um, my goal, my dream is to expand that revenue stream by growing it to surrounding communities. Majority of our surrounding communities utilize private companies uh, for their sanitation services and we have the opportunity to go after those and keep that money in the local economy and it's an easy way to talk to the mayor and council. Uh, over the past year I have talked to any elected official who will let me talk to them about sanitation and my goal is to grow that as much as possible. Uh, that's good. Let, let Tina have the mic. You, you did good. I think that you, you said a lot of words in 60 seconds. You're doing good. You're doing good. Well, I'm Tina Pike. I'm not anything special. I'm just a citizen like you are. I've been serving the um, public for 40 years. I am eager. I am excited. And I'm ready to take that service to a whole new level. I'm not alone. I always have someone watching over me and guiding me. Can y'all hear me? Is that okay? All right. I, um, I respect every citizen. I'm proud to be a citizen of Rainsville myself. I am eager to get to know you if I don't already know you. And I'm eager to serve you. And I want you to know that your interest, your needs are my interest and my needs. I just want to be able to serve you and to do what I can for you. I'm eager to learn. I am new. I don't know a lot about what I'm running for, but I'm willing to learn and do all I can. Marshall? I'd like to, I'd like to thank y'all for coming because it's people like y'all that 
make the wheels turn. Uh, you know, I listen to my opponent, Mr. Graham, talk about uh, garbage, and I agree with him. We do need to expand it. But where I think we have a fundamental difference is he was like a champion of the bond issue, you know, taking that money out. That was a $1.5 million bond we took out on an interest-only loan for the first seven years. I mean, is that something you would do in your own personal finance? It doesn't matter how much money you bring in, you know, if it's going out as fast as you're bringing it in. So there, I think, lies the fundamental difference. I mean, do you want somebody that's going to, you know, borrow and spend, or do you want somebody that's going to try to conserve? And I would like to create infrastructure, take that money and create infrastructure. But first of all, we've got to, uh, you know, be fiscally responsible with the money. Thank you. Dale. You got it working, so I'll, I'll continue with it. I've enjoyed tonight. I hope you uh, did as well. I hope you learned a little bit. Uh, I learned a lot. I always learn a lot. I uh, sincerely seek your vote in, uh, on August 23rd. I want to serve this city on the city council. I have not had that opportunity. I'd like to get that opportunity. I'm uh, not just a, uh, a one-issue type person. I've, uh, uh, I'm interested in all aspects of government. I've visited uh, every place. I, I told several people I've been to the, the farmer's market every time it's been open this year except once. I think I've always bought something there. Uh, so my family roots run deep in this, uh, in this community. Uh, I'm one, uh, Derek and I are the only two veterans uh, out of this group, and I'm proud to be a veteran. I'm proud to have served my country in, in uh, the Air Force. I'd like to serve this city on the city council. I think I am well-rounded enough in, in areas. Maybe we didn't have the opportunity tonight to touch on a lot of other topics that we wanted to talk about. I would like to talk more about budget and uh, about management and things of that sort. We didn't get that opportunity, but I want to tell you that I'm interested. The L. <laughs> <laughs> Bijan. I feel like this is a job interview. That's something I have never done. In 1980, I went to work for a state and been there 37 years. So I feel like tonight, you interview me for this job. Just look at both of us and look at the qualification that we have and what we've done for this town in the past four years when I was in. And my opponent never had brought anything to this town that I can put the finger on and say, good job. So I feel like that this interview that we're doing in here is very important that who you wanted to serve in place two in the council. And like I say in the past, I love it. I want to serve again. And good Lord have given me the chance to do it again. So please vote for me. Thanks. Ricky. You know, I have worked with uh, three different mayors, eight different council members. And when you work together, there's not the skies is the limits. But you have to work together. You have to learn to agree, to disagree. You have to have respect for one another. Once you walk out, it's over. That's the, way we, that's the way it always worked with us. Now, we didn't always agree. Everybody voted their conviction. And we walked on. It never was brought up anymore. That's what we got to get back to. When you look around and think about Hardee's and McDonald's and Burger King and uh, Industrial Park over there where uh, the uh, Rangeville Church Pew and the solar plant and Mayfield, RTI, that's promoting our city. That's growth for our city. That's what enables us to bring industry back to our city. That's what enables us to give us money to make sure that we get fire protection, police protection. I was making some notes, and if y'all seen me looking at my phone, I was looking at notes, so I went and texting or Facebooking. <laughs> We're gonna check when we get home. Yeah, check in. Budgeting, marketing, and maintaining equipment and working with people. That's how number one party started in 2004.
We had 20 customers roughly our first year. Now we serve over 500 in three states. We done it with just two people. We done it with newspapers, word of mouth, and working with people. We work with all kinds of people. Some people are nice, some people are not so nice, but we made it happen. We took a business from nothing and made it into a company. We have over 40 rides. We went from not a, a non-existing business to we're one of the largest. That's what I want to do with Rainfall. I want to take and get the budgets in place. I want to market what we have, and I want to sell it to the world. Derek? Uh, first of all, uh, I want to thank WVSM and uh, Mountain Valley uh, for putting this on. Uh, I think it's important and, uh, to do stuff like this. Uh, for y'all that don't know me, I'm a motivator. Uh, I love getting out and helping people. Uh, you know, I want to bring back uh, peace and harmony, of course, and uh, I want to bring back some uh, positive stuff to Rainsville. I'm tired of the negativity. Uh, I'm a positive person. I don't like drama. Uh, I'm all business. I'll always agree to disagree professionally, and, uh, you know, I try to hold myself to a higher standard. Uh, again, uh, I'm a veteran, and uh, appreciate bringing that up, but uh, thank y'all. Uh, thank y'all for coming out, and I want to thank my wife. Uh, you know, she's been so supportive during this. It's hard knocking on doors, uh, but, but I really enjoy it, and uh, I want to thank my wife. She's been very supportive, and I also want to thank you guys coming out, and I sure would appreciate y'all's uh, support on the 23rd. Thanks. Jeff. Also, I'd like to thank Mountain Valley and WVSM for having this, and I'd like to thank all y'all for being here. Um, I think all the candidates that we have can do a good job for this city. And, you know, we've, we've discussed fire, we've discussed police and all this. But one thing that I'm really passionate about is beautification. And the crossing up here is awful. I want the signs gone, I want all that. I want people... I want that manicured where it looks good. I'm in the landscape business, so I'd like to see that look good. I want people to come up through there and go, oh, this, this is beautiful, instead of, oh, they got chicken eggs down here on the right with a yard sale. I, I can't stand that. But I, I really want to put some emphasis on the beautification. <laughs> Sorry, that's, I've seen Blue Tech Hound sign up there. Uh, but anyway, that's, if I get in, I'll, I'd like to put some emphasis on the beautification for the city. <laughs> Sorry, Barnett. <laughs> and, uh, but I would appreciate your vote. And uh, like I said, thank you for being here tonight.